I would say stand out from other makeup artists. I try to create an experience for my clients. I like them to leave with more confidence, maybe learning something. Um, Use my art, my tool to you know reflect other women's experiences. Um, uh, but there's also been some negative reactions from people who aren't so into the project, and I am okay with that. I don't expect for everyone to be okay with this, especially not men. I got the I got the job. And I was, it was a very big dilemma. Do I leave where I'm comfortable or do I go and pursue this adventure? Well, my parents were huge advocates um, of what we call tikkun olam, and that is like reparation of the world. And it's an obligation to contribute and to impact not just your immediate community, but the extended one. Don't let anyone tell you that you cannot do anything. And it, it's such a cliche thing to say, but surround yourself, and I, I, this is so serious, surround yourself with people that truly believe in you, truly empower you, truly make you feel like you can do anything in the world because that's what keeps me going, that's what keeps me motivated, that's what keeps me thinking that I could do anything. There are a I'm lot of one. challenges when it comes to being an artist, um, especially a visual artist like myself. Um, it, one thing is money. I don't want to be a starving artist, so I have to make money to um, support myself. I have been lucky, I feel like, since I've been out of school to, uh, you know, have my art sustain my life. I, I've been lucky in that way. Um, but it is challenging. To, to be an artist and to have that as your business because it is like a small business. Um, so particularly with this project, Stop Telling Women to Smile, um, it's been taking over a lot of my life recently. And so it's like, how do I you know, continue with this project that I'm very passionate about, but also uh, pay rent and pay bills? The day, how are you gonna differentiate your lessons to accommodate all your learners? Great, how are you gonna find time to go to the bathroom when there's no time? I mean, these are challenges, but when you're dealing with the children's life and you know that your call now puts somebody behind the bar and want a child who's not in it, the comfort of his own home, those, I think those are the challenges. And, you know, not let this be the only thing that I do because, you know, like I said, I, I'm in a painter and I want to continue painting and I want to do all these other things um, while also continuing this project. So for me, I've had to enlist help and I've had to bring people in and I'm trying to expand it to make it more of like a collaborative thing, more of a community-based project instead of it just being me by myself doing so I mean, even with the challenges and even with, you know, like I was saying before, the naysayers about the project, um, I am very motivated to continue doing this because it's something that I'm passionate about. Right. It's, for a very long time has oppressed women. Right. So this movement, even though it's catered for women, it's for everyone because I'm telling you, when a woman is empowered, it benefits everybody. Right. We're talking families, communities, Right. Business, economy, everything is all advantages. Yeah. It's all advantages. So I could be doing this, you know, I'm a wife, I'm a sister, I'm a friend, so I have to always allocate my time properly. Sometimes I'm not always in the business zone. I but again, it's passion and purpose. When you're driven by passion, your purpose is just going to open up for you. When you have the boiling in your belly that you want to do, when you finally activate it, things will happen for you. And another thing I like to say as well is that there's no competition. There is no competition. When you are fulfilling your passion and your purpose, it's at your pace, how you want it to happen. You cannot let other people get in your mind and say, oh, well, she's doing this, how come you're not? It's not about that. As a fellow educator dealing with all different levels of kids, what 
is your plan for using this new social media in some way or whatever to empower young girls? Hey, you know what? You you might not make it to the you might not make it to the NBA, but you're an incredible writer. So why don't you go into sports journalism? Do you know what that is? So explaining that to a first grader has already planted the seed, and and I think that's where the empowerment comes from. It, when we're talking about empowerment and women empowerment, it is our duty to empower ourselves outside of this box that we live in so that the first and second graders have more options than being a doctor, a lawyer, a rapper, a basketball player, or a model. Or a nurse. Idiot. Yeah. It, it, it begins with us. So if, if, all, if all we're giving to them is that, then we can't keep faulting the educators when they're not becoming something greater than, than what they are. So in, in the empowerment circle that, that we're all trying to accomplish to be, women, men, we have to set the standard. So we need to do better so the children can do better. And everybody, you know, you search within yourself to figure what So that much is. pressure is put on women and their looks. So how you look is, as a woman, and your appearance is your most valued aspect um, you know how you look you know like I said I think that street harassment happens a lot because we are looked at as decoration and so how you look in your appearance is um, supposed to be very important to women and I think that that's what it causes maybe um, some competition between women oh well she's this or she's that um, because we're looking at looks I think that and when we have it, then we are not going to be looking at the next person saying, oh, I wish I had her hair, or I wish I was skinny like her, or I wish I could dress like her. Because when you have so much secureness in yourself, you're going to project that, and other people are going to sense it, and they're going to say, that girl is on fire, essentially. <laughs> right? And if we're all on fire, then there is, there cannot be room for competition because we are all amazing. We are all awesome. We all came here looking to the nines, you know? Yeah. You come across a woman who is constantly uh, knocking herself down. All of us, if we have a friend like that, if we have a family member like that, it's our duty to help them realize how beautiful they are because there are so many women who don't realize how beautiful they are. And I'm sorry, but your clothing size does not equate beauty. The generosity of our uh, sponsors and vendors here today. I want to thank Pretzel Crisps back there who fed us yummy, yummy stuff. Thank you, Pretzel Crisps, for uh, participating in our event. And we are very grateful for your presence here today. I want to thank Cecile's of Hoboken, who provided a beauty bar. Yes, and she actually has a, a raffle prize. So when uh, when we do that, she'll come and uh, uh, do the raffle for that. I also want to thank Bust Magazine. I want to thank Dina for providing us with that wonderful yoga session. I hope everyone was put in the zone. Yes, she's amazing. By Mr. Tahit, we're